want to do my post effects in a separate comp. So I have everything selected here. I'm going to go to pre-compose and let's call this main pre. The first effect we're going to do is the depth of field. And uh, for this, we need to go back to our original render. Let's drop this into a new comp and we're going to call this uh, depth of field pass and click OK. And because this is an RPF file, that uh, special format we exported from Cinema 4D, I can go to my effects and presets, type in extract, and I want to get the 3D channel extract. Put this on our layer, and the first thing it's going to try and get is the Z depth. Now we need to adjust the black point and white point until this starts to look more like a depth pass. I'm going to slide the black point closer to zero, just to the point when the farthest point on the render starts to turn completely black. I think this is going to be around minus 300, but the front is completely gone now. So let's uh, bring this closer to zero as well. We just want to squeeze uh, this range until we have a progression of white to black from the front to the back. If you overshoot this, it's going to flip your image. So make sure you don't uh, do that. You've got to be very careful. These values are extremely sensitive. So just uh, take it easy and uh, try to get the right numbers. In this case, it's going to be minus 150 for the white point. And I think the black point can go even lower. Let's go for minus 275. So when we apply the blur effect, the areas on the front would be in focus and the darker areas would be out of focus. The camera angle changes though. And uh, what we need to do is to split our layer when that happens. So this is the first time it happens. Press Shift, Control and D. And uh, we just need to adjust this until it looks more correct. Now this is pretty much uh, there. Maybe set the Y point to about minus 175. Uh, and I think that should be okay. We can split the next section, Shift, Control and D. And uh, on this layer, I think we want to see a little bit more at the back here. So I will set the black point to about minus 280 maybe. And uh, that's just going to show a little bit more what's happening over here. And for the end section, um, I think this could be more white at the beginning. So let's press Shift, Control and D. Set the white point to minus 180, maybe. Just a subtle difference. And then from this point, the camera just uh, goes way out here and uh, the logo disappears. That's fine, that shouldn't give us any problems. I'm gonna go to the main comp and let's drag our depth of field pass below our main layer. Let's create a new adjustment layer. Go to effect, blur and sharpen and you wanna get the camera lens blur. Repeat edge pixels must always be ticked. And for the blur map, we're going to point to the depth of field pass. You can see this is actually focusing on the black areas, which is uh, up here. Let me put the radius to maybe 30 so you can see what I'm talking about. It's focusing way up here when really it should be somewhere at the front. So we can invert the blur map and we can actually also move the focal point. So we could slide this to something like 0.2 maybe. It's very sensitive. I think the difference is between being zero, being at the very front and one being at the furthest point. So around 0.7 seems to look in the middle. Perhaps there is too much blur. We can lower this to about 20. And uh, another thing which is happening, which I don't like is these edges. They're still quite sharp. And then there's this weird blurriness uh, beyond that point. What I should be seeing here is a more gradual effect. So to try and fix this, we can go to the depth of field pass, create a new adjustment layer on top of everything, go to effect, blur and sharpen, and we can set fast blur and we can set something like maybe 30 repeat edge pixels in the main comp. 
that may make that look uh, a little bit better. So that's how you would get depth of field in After Effects using the camera lens blur. You can do a pretty good job with the camera lens blur effect inside of uh, After Effects, but there is a uh, an alternative. It's a third party plugin called Frischluft. So if I go to Effect, I wanna go to Frischluft Depth of Field, and it works very similar to the standard camera lens blur. You just select your depth layer, set your radius. I'll set this to about 20. And what's great about this plugin is not only does it look better in general, the depth of field you get with this is definitely of a better quality. You can also focus by simply clicking where you want to focus. So I'll get this little handle over here and click and it's going to focus exactly where you want it to. If you want to maintain focus of a particular point throughout the animation, you can set a keyframe for the focal point, move along your sequence, and the whole time this is on, I want to be focused at, the, at this section here. So it's gone out of focus because the camera moved. I can simply just select my depth again and point here, and this is going to follow focus throughout the whole animation. When I get to a frame change, the map behind this is now completely different, which means that these settings are no longer relevant. Now at this point, I could try and keyframe everything. So I would have to keyframe the radius and the focal point, but it's just easier to split the layer, press U to delete the original keyframes, and just sort of start from scratch. So pick your focal point. I'm gonna focus on this piece here and uh, I'm gonna push the radius up to 30. And this time I wanna be focused on this little section the whole time. So if I go to the next frame change, I can select my focal point before it switches. So just, just go to the layer again, uh, set a keyframe here and point to the piece. I need to go back to the first frame and uh, point it there too. And this is now gonna follow focus the entire time. We can split again, reset the keyframes. I'm gonna keep the radius at 30 though. I wanna look somewhere on this side of the frame. This is going to be the first focal point just before the last frame change. I could maybe just look further ahead this is the last frame now. I can press Shift, Control, and D to split. Reset. I'm gonna point somewhere closer to the middle. And the depth map here changes so quickly. Um, I mean, we can try and follow it for about a second or so, but then it just keeps falling away into the background. So from this point onwards, I'm just going to animate the radius itself between seven seconds and nine seconds, I'm going to bring this completely in focus. So set the radius to zero, maybe even do that uh, sooner. So everything is sharp by the time the text starts to appear. A RAM preview, and we have our logo with the depth of field effects. In the next lesson, which should be three from the end, we're going to do a simple RGB split effect.